Welcome to Keith and the Girl. I'm Keith Malley. I'm Chemda. The 2016 47-hour marathon is up. I'll have slash marathon go there, but you can go to our store, keithandthegirl.com slash store, and take a look right there. If you are one of the Kickstarter supporters, and for whatever reason you didn't see an email telling you uh, how to download the marathon uh, that you've already been gifted, be sure to let us know at info at ktg.com. Today's guest, Mike Leibovitz. How are you? I'm well. Thanks for having me back. It's good to see you again. You were on with Mike Kaplan, and Mike Kaplan, he's out and he's, you're in. Yeah, he's out. I, uh, that's, I, yeah, I feel I'm gratified. I don't feel it's unjustified. But uh, <laughs> it's, yeah, and, and I think it's exciting. I'm here for sort of the first round of a double header you guys are doing. Mm-hmm. So we're, I get you guys fresh. <laughs> that's right. The next guest we have today, I don't know how that's going to go. Yeah. But right now I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, Mike Leibovitz, you can uh, look him up at ComediansYouShouldKnow.com. I know I did. And it said that Mike Leibovitz's comedy career began at the age of six with clowning classes at the local JCC. Yes, yeah, you have accurately read my bio. Is this a, <laughs> is JCC Jewish Community Center? It is Jewish Community Center. And my mom tells me that I should write Jewish Community Center. Right. But I figure that the people who need to know, no. they know. And the people that don't, it's best. Yeah, it's better that way. <laughs> that they just say, oh, that's probably just some place where a six-year-old can take clowning classes. Yes, it is. What did you learn in clowning? I learned how to, um, I like, like sort of pratfalls. I learned how to trip. Hmm. I mean, right. I learned how to trip and fall down, I, but like on purpose. Um, What's the technique? So what you do is you put one foot in front of the other foot, and then you walk forward with the back foot, okay. and you trip over the front foot. Did you have to pay for these classes? Uh, my parents did, yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Yeah, I, I had to pay with my future inheritance, I suppose. Oh, right. Yeah. Which is how I think all children should look at everything they do. Look what I learned, Mom. <laughs> I can fall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What you've seen me do my whole life, right. I learned how to do it on purpose. <laughs> but then you could, uh, what I did also learn how to do is like how to um, <laughs> how to like um, bend over like I was going to pick up a hat, but right. then kick it away and not mm. actually be able to pick it up. So that's useful. That's you know? next level. <laughs> yeah. Did you have like a clown recital at the end of the class? Probably. That's I, nice. Yeah, I don't know if we called it a recital or not. I'm calling it a recital. You, yes, you are. <laughs> it's I, just like twenty idiots kicking shit on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, that's, I think that's my, maybe what they called it. Uh, go, uh, go pick up your diploma, and if you can, you, th- you fail. <laughs> Honestly, I can't, and you're just tripping over each other. Uh, Gary Marshall passed away, the Pretty Woman director, at age 81. Okay. He created, are you holding up okay? Yeah, I'm, I, uh, I just learned, so I'm going to start going through the stages right okay. now. Okay. Um... I was nervous because Hennessy, my husband, he actually knew him. And he's had strong responses to celebrities dying because he's met and like hung out with them. So when he woke up, I'm like, before you look at your phone, because it's everywhere, right. I'm like, uh, I just want to tell you before you find it. And he's like, okay, who died? And I'm like, someone you know. Okay, uh, who? A director. This okay, is don't some game yeah, I know. Together. Yeah, I know. I hope my mom does this to me when my dad dies. No, yeah. it, it gets worse. But he like didn't want to know. But then started asking questions. Then I said the wrong person's name. <laughs> <laughs> I said your Whoops. dad. I said you told you told him this husband that my dad passed away. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I said Joe Marshall, and he goes, "Oh my god, really?" And I'm like, "Well, you know, he's kind of older and blah blah blah, and you know." And so, Who's Joe Marshall? Joe Marshall is, I was like, it's a director that you worked with, and he's worked with both Joe and Gary. Okay. <laughs> Fucking wow. idiot. Yeah. Wow. And so, and so I'm like, uh, it's, it's Joe Marshall. And he's like, oh my God, this is crazy. Why would he, how, what? And then I think Joe is like in his 50s or something. Right. So I just, and then I'm like, wait, do I have the name right? I said that out loud. Yeah. And then I looked it up, and I'm like, not Joe. Who's the other one? She said, do I have the name right? Anyway, I got to go to work. Right. <laughs> uh, somebody's dead yeah. that I think you appreciate. <laughs> right. Thanks for playing. I'm right. such an idiot. Yeah. And uh-huh. I had this whole plan. Like, I'm just going to be, you know, I'm going to softball it today. I'm going to be good. I'm going to be the best wife ever. And now on Who Just Died. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask Hamda. Ding, ding. <laughs> Correct answer. Yeah. Uh, he so it's cor- Gary Marshall, is that right? Gary yeah. Marshall is the one that passed away, 81, created Happy Days in the 70s. There okay. was a, there was for a year, it was the number one show on TV, but again, there were three shows. Yeah. You know well, what I mean? What was there? Happy Days and and then... Uh, Shlemizel Shlemazel. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Laverne and Shirley. Yeah. I don't know why he kept going against himself, but he got number one, number two, and the number three shows. 
Uh, Mork and Mindy, Laverne and Shirley, uh, movies, Pretty Woman, Princess Diaries. Um, Pretty Woman grossed $463 million worldwide. Because people hate hookers. Blech. Right. Gross. But uh, it was such a big deal, the uh, happy days, that, remember, Joni Loves Chachi came from that. Ted Alexandro brought up the point that Chachi spoke at the Republican National Convention the very next day. Gary Marshall dies. He couldn't take it. He's like, look at this idiot I made famous. What's he doing up there? This racist. I'll show him. Yeah. (laughs) Attention off you. Yeah. Penny Marshall, of course. uh, Laverne is his sister. Did uh, a league of their own. His daughter? No. 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 Sister? Really? Oh, get out. So okay. So did he create that show for his daughter? The Vernon Shirley? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't seem right, does it? And all it? my parents did was send me to clowning classes? <laughs> uh, some movies that he did. Overboard he did. The great Kurt Russell <gasps> oh. rapey movie. Yeah. But with Goldie Hawn, isn't that where they met and fa- fell in love? Or they were already in love? I'm going to say that's where they met and fell in love. Let's just say it. <laughs> it's a beautiful story, and Gary got them together. Uh, it's fun to uh, put out lies there for the people who know how to listen to podcasts but don't know how to Google facts. <laughs> right. It's a very small demo we're after here. Uh, then he started doing a bunch of shit. This is some article I'm reading. <laughs> <laughs> some hosts will read the article before the show starts, but that's uh... Uh, you know. He started doing those shows based on, those movies based on holidays: Valentine's Day, oh. New Year's Eve, Mother's Day, The Money uh-huh. Makers, where you put sixty stars b- yeah. in it and nothing goes anywhere. Yeah, but like you try to pretend that everything threads together, but right, ugh. yeah. I uh, just want to die. Like, how is there another scenario that we have to sit through? Arbor Day was in pre-production when he passed away. Wow, that's a shame. <laughs> yeah. All right, let me mention this. Zip Recruiter, all right? Are you hiring? Do you know where to post your job to find the best candidates? Because not to brag, I do. I know where. Where? Where? You, you got to post it on all the top job sites. Not just one job site, not just two. And you got to go through social media also. So how do you do that in one simple step? Sounds like you know. I can't imagine. You talk to the guys at Zip Recruiter. <laughs> Looking back, right? right? You should have put that together, right. but yeah. okay. With ZipRecruiter.com, you post your job to 100 plus job sites, including, like I said, media, social media such as Facebook, Twitter. Find candidates in any city or industry nationwide. They have a very easy to use interface. They'll be juggling emails or calls to your office. You have better things to do. You're, bu- you're busy. That's why you need to hire people. You're too busy. The irony. You're too busy to hire people, and then you're going to But I got time to post t- on 100 different sites? Yeah. No. No, now you do. You have ZipRecruiter do it for you. Find out why ZipRecruiter has been used by over 800,000 businesses. That's like closer to a million than like yeah. 100,000. That's like 1 50th of the dollars that Pretty Woman made. And right now, you can post jobs at ZipRecruiter for free. Here's what you do. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Talent. Is that forward slash? Or any slash. slash. <laughs> any slash you want. They don't mind. ZipRecruiter.com slash talent. One more time. Try it for free. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash talent. And I'll tell you something because, again, you're busy. You don't have to thank me. All right? That th- it stinks enough when you find the perfect hire. That's the way I feel. <laughs> All right, um, Keith, can I thank you for telling me about that? Yeah, of course. <laughs> thank you for okay. telling me about Sorry, that. Sorry, we got to move on. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Excuse me. Uh, looking at Keith and the Girl polls, we put up a poll. Is Jennifer Aniston a hypocrite? She was saying, hey, look at the, you know, women are being given hassle, body image, media, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, she's doing these water ads where she's naked. You can see her butt in them. Yes. And I, I mean, I get it. I look at that. I'm like, oh, I'm and thirsty. What, what was the other side of that? Uh, hey, come on. She has to. To stay relevant and number one. What what is it that she's saying? That, that that she's in a system where she's not allowed to have any kind of weight gain. If they do see weight gain, then they start talking about a baby bump and mm-hmm. that you can't be a, they, a, an actor, basically, unless you have this they, on. They threatened to fire Matthew Perry on her old show for going off of his uh, drugs he was addicted to, right? I don't know. Is that really true? In, in Friends, Matthew Perry, he Chandler, up. he got real fat. Right. And they started, there was one season where he was wearing all these big, giant Moomoos. dress shirts. Yeah, right, Moomoos, right. And uh, they put his hair in curlers, too, which was right. weird and unnecessary. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, I, from what I heard, I mean, we'd have to ask Jennifer, but from what I heard, they said 
hey, you got to lose the weight. He, and he blew up because he, he was taking all these painkillers he was addicted to. He stopped taking the painkillers. He blew up. Right. And they're like, you got to get back on those painkillers. They would leave painkillers around the studio. Mm-hmm. Uh, They'd put them in the, the M&M bowls yeah. and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> At the coffee shop. A lot <laughs> yeah. of scenes Central in the coffee Park. shop. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is Jennifer Aniston a hypocrite? Was the poll 63% of the audience say yes? This is Keith and the Girl audience. Keith and the Girl audience, and they are correct. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> Don't be a poor sport, hun. Uh. <laughs> are we going to have to take sides on this ourselves? No, but we already no. did. You we guys already did. did. Okay. We're good. And, and we just learned that I'm right. It's like Keith Richards saying, Don't do heroin. Okay, it's good advice, but somebody else tell me. Right. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Uh, this mm, well, but like in AA, you have all the drunks telling each other not to drink. I think that mostly that is the way to go. Uh, this person writes, Peter Dinklage talks about being a young actor and broke as shit, but turned down leprechaun auditions. Right. Oh, mm-hmm. goodness. That's so great. That means Jennifer should change her whole life. Not, with one guy. It means Peter Dinklage can now write an article about not selling out because he's earned the right. What is selling out? Who knows? I don't. I when I was a teenager, I thought I knew, but now it just seems yeah. like I wish someone means, would buy me out. It right. means <laughs> it means being fake to yourself. It means I guess it means sacrificing your principles for monetary gain. Yes. No, but sometimes it means working within the system in order to gain whatever it is that you're going out for. But I don't think. See, if you frame it that way, you don't call it selling out. You call it doing. You know. Right. Getting her done. Seeing, you know, looking ahead. So isn't it a personal choice if you want to believe that you're selling out, then you're selling out. It's your version of selling out. It's so crazy, too, because, like, we're all going to die. So (laughs) So sell out. Well, what difference does it make? Like, the stories play out differently, but, you know, I don't know. Sell out, don't sell out. I don't know. It seem, it all seems very... In in the wake of of Gary Marshall, it all seems so futile. (laughs) I really... Uh, we put up the poll, do you drunk text your exes when we talk to that whore Suba? And your choices were yes or no, of course, very simple. And so far, right now, now the show was just the other day, but 100% no. No? They do not drunk text. This is interesting because drunk texting is a $6 billion industry, but nobody's doing it. Okay. All People right. are making money off of drunk texting? Wait, the question was, do you drunk text? What was the yeah. question? Do you drunk text your exes? And 100% no. So far. Do you see who we're working with now, Mike? Liars. Do you see this? Liars calling out hypocrites. 60 what percent of what? Come on. 100% nobody drunk dialed. Have you ever drunk dialed exes? I know you're married now, three kids, but do you ever find yourself going, hey, remember that day years ago? Well, I've been married for so long that like I don't, like I didn't have their, like we, we, I was probably, no, that's not true. I can't, no comment. You didn't think they had (laughs) phone numbers. I don't even know phone numbers. Yeah, like I'm pretty sure it was just like a strictly like pebble at the window situation back then maybe a hundred percent means no comment e- right yeah. yeah no i don't but i don't do it now i don't but i have i have yeah of course everybody does every the hunt that's a hundred percent lies on there is 100 percent lies <laughs> uh, based on my experience with myself right <laughs> those people are all uh, uh also uh, they all ate too much today <laughs> yeah, right. they shouldn't have had both halves of that sandwich from <laughs> does it count when keith's drunk and he tells me how funny i was on the show because he's listening back to it is that drunk texting your ex? I don't know. Are you are you guys exes? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. I did. I just found out. <laughs> okay. It's not working, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you were just friends? <laughs> uh, a champion big mountain skier was killed in an avalanche in Chile. She was shooting scenes for an upcoming video game called Steep. Oh, um, too steep. Yeah. So she's a mountain skier. I played this game, and when you get to the that part, it's it's covered in police tape. <laughs> Doesn't that seem weird? You know, they could have figured out something else. Yeah, maybe maybe fix it in post. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they're like, all right, we're just that you, inaccessible. We got to get the shot. Right. Oh, well. You go over there and it goes, mm. and I'm like, do I need a key? You know, you always need keys. Is it like a Wizard of Oz situation where you like see her legs sticking out <laughs> <from> somewhere? <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Is that the new Wizard of Oz situation? <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess it is. What was the old Wizard of Oz situation? Off to see the wizard, I guess. Oh, yeah. No, no. It's, it's dark in 2016. Yeah. <laughs> we were playing yesterday the Melania Trump speech and uh-huh. putting it, of course, right next to the old Michelle Obama, Michelle Obama speech. And... Before it came out, like, you know, obviously you just lifted Michelle Obama's speech. Melania and people are wondering, well, who wrote this speech? Is it Melania's fault? Melania said, hey, I'm the one 
Now, this is, again, this is before people realize what's up. She says, I'm the one who wrote this speech. Has she gone over the speech with you? Did you practice it on the plane? I read once over it, and that's all, because I wrote it and uh, with a little help as possible. So. Oh, with as little help as possible. I don't know what that means to yeah. her. As little help as possible right. could Which mean... Which in my case means... Right. I turned yeah. on the whole thing. I went on YouTube. I changed a couple of uh, periods to exclamation points. Mine now. Right, right. This a speech writer who says, I actually wrote the speech for Melania Trump and uh, is offering to resign. Uh, Donald Trump will not accept the res- uh, resignation. So you know it's all bullshit. Like, all right, you say right. you resigned, so my wife doesn't look like an asshole. I won't accept it. Because I need to say you're fired. Right, and the world will go on. Yeah. Yeah, and, and then the news organizations just put it all out, like, this is without calling out that it's obvious, complete bullshit. Right. And then I see right now that she's trending number one, this, this speech trader. Her name is um, Meredith McGiver. And, uh, Danny, what do, you, what do you see? There's just weirdness going on with this lady, it seems. Uh, so it's still breaking, but it seems that she's not a real person. <laughs> <laughs> For, here's what we got. Trump tried to fire her, but she didn't exist. So. Trump is so weird with these aliases, right? He makes people up. Yes, he's got John Barron and John Miller, which were really just him, but he claimed were spokespeople for himself, and he would right. just give quotes about himself. And he wouldn't himself. even hide it, because he uses the same cadences. Mm-hmm. He's like, ah, mm-hmm. my... my uh, my boss, Donald Trump, he's huge, he's great, he's the best. He is huge. <laughs> uh, so according to her bio, she is a registered Democrat, okay. and she's a close associate of Trump who has ghostwritten a lot of his books. Um, but all of the information on her Wikipedia page was added in the last 15 hours. <laughs> <laughs> and her Wikipedia page picture is a different picture from her Twitter handle, which is stolen from a life coach. So the, the picture on her Twitter is stolen from someone else, and it's a different picture than the one that was added to her Wiki page. This is who you're voting for out there if you're voting for this dude. So this is all happening right now, so nothing has right. been officially announced. But it doesn't seem good for Meredith McIver. But Mer- so Mer- the good news is Meredith is not fired. Right, Trump was very right. gracious in not firing a made-up personality. I hope Meredith doesn't get into a car accident and dies. Oh, no, that would be terrible. That'd be sad. All right, Danny Hatch, so, thank you, buddy. Yeah, 2016, after, love it. To, to die at 15 hours old would be so sad. <laughs> she had so much left to not do. Yeah. Oh, man. That's, that really is a, a new... I mean, I don't know. Is, is it just more transparently, though, what all political campaigns do always? I mean... Just like I don't remember it being this obvious, right? I think it's just like super transparent. Yeah, it's like it's like maybe it's, that's what he meant by complete transparency. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be obvious how dopey I am. Right, <laughs> like oh, refreshing. Oh man, but it, people justify it. They continue to justify it. You mean people who vote vote for Trump? Yeah, you're justifying they, so they, much. They'll, they'll say they'll say yeah, I don't like when he does this or that, but I don't care. Right, because yeah. he speaks his mind. Right. I feel like, okay, so this is another example of what an average person might do to try to get out of trouble. Because we're always acting like little kids, like, oh, there's traffic. Oh, there's, oh, I would also make up a person to, yeah. you know what I mean? Like to get out of work. Would, or... Like write a note from, from my mom to uh, buy cigarettes for her at the corner store when I was a kid. Yeah. Oh, my mom, doctor, <laughs> mm-hmm. doctor, you know, whatever needs it. <laughs> and, and, it was always a doctor. We always made it a doctor. <laughs> was sending her kid to buy cigarettes at the corner store. <laughs> you don't want to argue with a doctor yeah, buying yeah, cigarettes. Right. I, I think she only smokes like half at a time. She's a doctor. Yeah. So it's, don't, you won't see me for a while <laughs> uh but yeah it really is it's 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 this weird thing where it's like yeah donald trump speaks her his mind hillary clinton doesn't speak her mind but at least she has one right you know yeah that's so funny that it's sad he, he, or and, it's, and vice versa yeah i don't and know and then back around again i don't know yeah it, it makes it makes me thankful that one day Relatively soon, we will all be dead. And so this, <laughs> you're, you're back at this, huh? Well, I mean, I feel There's like a theme. It, I feel like it's like the it's like the one constant in life is that eventually this will be over one way or another. So, like, if it's totally terrible, it still ends up the same way. How's life, Mike? It's, <laughs> how's know, life? He found out Gary Marshall died. He said, "Oh, good for him." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. I was always rooting for him. How, uh, how old are your kids again? Uh, my oldest is thirteen. Okay. And then I have one who's about to turn four and one who just turned one. Okay. 
Yeah. Is that a, it's 13. Is that a tough age? It's or tough. They, age. They're all tough. Uh, they're, I mean, they're all tough. I mean, they all require a lot of energy. The 13 year old is particularly tough because he has some uh, developmental issues, which is like, he's got right. the, like, he's, he's got some, um, so he's getting very big and he has some impulse control issues. And I it's see. like, you know, so that, that kind of stuff is, is tough, but he's also like a really sweet kid. And, right. um, and, and in some ways can take care of himself more. So he requires right. less attention because he can, he can you know go do things by himself. Do you have to have uh, puberty talks with him? We try. It's tough. He he likes. He's always naked. He won't. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. He's always, and he's he's getting pubes. And right. so it's like I feel like it was probably inappropriate for him to be naked around the house all the time before, but now it's like definitely not okay. Right. But, but you already let let the dog on the bed, so to speak. Exactly. Right. Yeah. It's it's tough too because he had like he doesn't like to wear clothes. You I, know mean, what I mean, who does, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. But like, yeah. But he really doesn't. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. That, but that's but passion. that's why it's hard for you to stop him from doing it because he's like, why, Dad? And you're like, I really don't know. <laughs> I re- like, I get it. <laughs> like, isn't it hard to explain? I don't know. We yeah. Just, be, yeah. Because like, yeah. But you're right. Because I have it. Other people have it. I just don't want to look at yours, son. <laughs> and the only thing you you know you're right. The only thing that's really happened is like pick, kids pick up on what you do. The behaviors that you present, they they uh, reflect back to you. So he hasn't started wearing his clothes, but now when I walk around naked, he yells at me. Oh, wait, you walk around naked too? Well, I mean, well, just like, I mean, just like in transitional times when I'm like looking for my clothes, I don't just like hang out naked all the time, but sometimes I don't have any pants on. I got to go get some pants from wherever they are. We live in kind of chaotic situation. Right? <laughs> you, you guys know when you take off your clothes and then you need to find your new clothes. Yeah. We, I think. Do you I mean, always know where your next clothes are coming from? I don't want to sound. See, I, I know I'm going to sound high and mighty. Okay. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. I do walk around the place naked, going like, is is the underwear in this bag, or is it already put away, or mm-hmm. is it you know over there? Do I even have any underwear? I would. I put lotion on in the kitchen, then yeah. I walk over to the drawer to get the bra and. Yeah, because it's a free for all. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. Ba- I can't keep. When I was like, when I was a kid, I used to, or when I was like a teenager, I used to run out, I'd run out of socks, and instead of like doing my laundry or whatever, I would just go into my dad's room and take mm. a pair of socks from him. And now that I have a teenage kid, um, when I run out of socks, I take his socks. <laughs> <laughs> You're not so tricking it's come me. Full yeah. cycle. Yeah, I know yeah. the game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Good luck finding socks in my room, kid. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, Megan Kelly says, I, too, was harassed by Fox News CEO Roger Ailes. Oh. And that's a big deal. You know, it's, you have uh, Gretchen Carlson. I bet she's no joke. But when you have a Megan Kelly coming out and right. complaining that These... she was sexually harassed. Some... They, it's like they only care about sexual harassment if it's their top ratings. Getter. Yeah. Because uh, she... otherwise he was just going to be they were going to pay her off. Right. Megan Kelly is not saying exactly uh, what happened, but she is talking uh, with lawyers. Um, that Ailes made unwanted sexual advances towards her about 10 years ago when she was a young correspondent at Fox. Kelly, according to the sources, has described her harassment by Ailes in detail. The revelation comes after the heels, comes on the heels of the Fox News host Gretchen Carlson's sexual harassment lawsuit against Ailes. Is there a woman over 50 who worked in an office who was not sexually harassed? If you think about it, there really isn't mm-hmm. a way that that would happen or it's so rare because yeah. it used to be in an office. People would legitimately call you toots. They could smack you on the ass. Yeah. Say, hey, honey, that right. kind of stuff. Like they would make puns about your tits somehow. I don't know what right. happened. Right. And so how? How? Right. <laughs> I mean, is there a woman o- over thirty who hasn't been sexually harassed? Who has a? J- I mean, it probably still happens. We just have to be more subtle about it. Right? Yes, but there's more HR, there's more right. training, there's yeah. more of a, of a response from your company, there's more, I'm not saying it doesn't happen at all, I'm just saying one is guaranteed and the other one is very likely. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's, it's a small line. Do you have all boys? I have, no, I have two, I have uh, two boys and then one Look how sadly young. you say. Well, we're talking about, you know, a young girl as yeah. a potential victim. So yeah, yeah it's, yeah, she's, she's one though. So maybe okay. we can make some progress between now and then. But I feel like it's just starting to go backwards. I feel like women made a lot of progress in the last 50 years, but I don't feel like have made a lot in the last 10 years. I think it goes forward and a little back because I think people think the problem is over. And yeah. then, and then it's like race too. It's like, yeah. oh, Obama's elected, racism exactly. is over. We forget about it. Like, no, 
it is not over. At yeah, all. things like I don't see color, dumb shit people say, you know, like I don't, yeah. I don't see sex. Maybe you should. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe if you did, you could get some, you know. <laughs> Uh, 21st Century Fox is giving Roger Ailes a deadline of August 1st to resign or face being fired for cause. What kind of shit is this? Yeah. <laughs> Man, that's some... That's some that exists? That's some high-level shit right there. Uh, yeah. If you don't leave, <laughs> we're going to... Con- but in August, yeah. let's face it. It'll be hot. You'll want to go out. That's the opposite of you can't fire me, I quit. It's uh, you better quit or we're going right. to fire you. I didn't know there was an opposite like that and a, and a deadline. The think de- about it. Well, there's a lot to think about. He will get $40 million if he leaves August 1st. Man, I got to start sexually harassing people. Right? It's a lesson I just that learned. good money. Hey, Mike. What's up? Pun tit pun. Mm-hmm. That's how clever people are. I yeah. mean, let's be honest. Yeah. In an office. See, this is why girls can't <laughs> do it. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're just better <laughs> at it. <laughs> Sexually harass me right now. Right. Well, uh... come on, say something. <laughs> you got to be a woman. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I could do it better if he was a woman. Uh, you're the breast on this show, Mike. Thank the you. Absolute see, breast. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the, uh, you know this uh, Jerry Sandusky and Joe Paterno. Oh. In the whole God, this show's such a bummer. I don't like them. <laughs> oh, God. I don't like them. <laughs> so it came out that, of course, as we, I think we all knew this by now, but uh, Joe Paterno absolutely he knew did for know. For 40 what, years or whatever, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, he, he knew even longer. It seems that he knew back in 1976. That's, that's 40 years ago. Oh, did you say, I, I wasn't sure if you said four or 40. Oh, for, for, I said 40. But yeah, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. yeah, he knew. He's just fucking ignoring it. A newly, but that was just a guess, and I was exactly right. Yeah. Which is pretty impressive. He literally knew my whole life. A newly, yeah, uh, how about that? A newly unsealed report found six different instances where sexual abuse allegations against former assistant coach Jerry Sandusky were either witnessed by other coaches or reported to university officials, including a 1976 allegation where one alleged victim made a report directly to head coach Joe Paterno. The documents are part of a court battle in which Penn State is trying to recoup from its insurance provider millions of dollars paid out in settlements to Sandusky's victims. So the insurance provider, of course, doesn't want to pay. And now we have a lawsuit. They're saying, look, you knew about this. Penn State, you knew about this. That's what the insurance company is saying. Wait, so if so, they didn't know about it, insurance pays someone? Yeah, if, yeah because you're buying insu- you paid for insurance in case there are any, uh, anything rapes? defamatory against the college, including rapes. Oh, I see. Of children. Oh. Yeah, child rapes. Um, oh, defamation of character? That's got to be an awkward uh, conversation when you sit down to buy your insurance policy and you say, and I'm going to need the child right. rape coverage as well. <laughs> it's so stupid because I won't need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just, you got to be prepared. Right. But if you have it, I'll check it. I'll check oh, the box. Man. <laughs> In addition to citing two more widely known instances, uh, including those witnesses, witnessed by Mike McQuarrie, I have a hard time sleeping at night because these other people exist, but they don't have a hard time sleeping at night, and they know the whole truth. Yeah, like who, who, who was sealing these documents in the first place? Who could watch a grown adult diddle with a kid, walk away going, none of my business? You mean how good of a defensive coordinator was this guy that he couldn't be replaced? Right. 19, a 1976 incident where was one— he, Is that what he was even? I don't know what he was. It's something football You sounded yeah. right. Thank you. Anna. That's kind of my secret to success is sounding right. I don't know any things, but I say them like I do. So there's the 76 incident. There's a 1987 incident of improper sexual conduct between Sandusky and a minor that was witnessed by then assistant coach Joe Serra. Let's keep calling it incidences. A 1988 whoopsie was between Sandusky and a child witnessed by then assistant coach Kevin O'Dea. Man, their official euphemisms are getting weirder yeah. and weirder. A 1988 oh boy happened. Uh, that was PC culture, I tell you. <laughs> so listen to this. A little more detail of the very first incident in 76. No, the no. victim, who was identified in court records as John Doe 150, said that while he was attending a football camp at Penn State, Sandusky touched him as he showered. <sighs> now, by the way, so these are happening to boys, too. You have any boys? Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Sandusky's finger penetrated the boy's rectum. Ooh, you know, that's sexy for everybody. Wow. And the victim asked to speak with Paterno about it. He uh, specifically told Paterno that Sandusky had sexually assaulted him, and Paterno ignored it. 
Is it accurate that Coach Paterno quickly said to you, I don't want to hear about any of that kind of stuff. I have a football season to worry about, the man's lawyer asked. And the kid said, specifically, yes. I was shocked, disappointed, offended. I was insulted. I said, is this all you're going to do? You're not going to do anything else? And Paterno walked away. Ugh. I have a football season? Yeah, they, the team was so good, though, that football team. The team, you know... Give up a little of this, gain a little of that. I'm going to put my finger in your rectum, and you're going to like it. You know, every kid likes that. Oh, I, I'm surprised that upset you. You know, start with the balls. Keith! What? <laughs> what were the kids? Why were there kids in that? It was some kind of, like, summer program, uh, and he was in charge of it, or he was absolutely, you know, one of the... One of the higher ups, and he's like, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you to the to the football field. That's very exciting for a kid. Now let's all shower together." It's sort of like it's like this terrible secret that uh, Paterno was keeping was keeping him alive because right. as soon as everyone knew about it, he died. Yeah, and, and now he's at peace. That's the kicker. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. How's it going? Yeah. Woo. I don't know how to deal with this. Yikes. Yeah. Well, here's how you deal so, with it. You, you learn a lesson from it. Th- look into anybody that loves kids so much. That's no, just, that's not fair. No, it's not fair. Okay. I'm sorry. I love kids that much. Uh, okay, then look well, into... Not, really? How many, not, how many are you... That much, but not that way. I mean, that... Of right? course. Well, thank I don't you, think, Mike. I don't think someone like that... I mean, I don't know. I'm assuming, but I don't... I don't I've worked with kids most of my life. But what? someone who is abusing kids does not love kids. Right. I know, but he's saying like if someone is so interested in being in the in the lives of children, being around children, yeah, look into them. Yeah. But I, I would if I had the power create a summer camp for and then, kids, and then we I mean? would look into you, and rightly so, look into anybody that on their free time they want to deal with twenty, thirty children. Something, something's going on. Yeah, double check. What the fuck? What <laughs> don't don't check people that work with kids? You work doing kids parties. Look into me. <laughs> What you do, kids? I think he's just trying to say something, and we're just being funny. Now this is this is kind of everybody's uh, okay, you know. What? Wait, you do kids parties? I, in my home privately. <laughs> yeah. See, that's the difference. <laughs> if you're doing a kids party, well, what do you do for? What's the theme of this? I, I would I would be a clown. I trip over myself. And, <laughs> okay. You know, kick things on kick the floor. Kick across right. the floor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, just just regular kids parties in front of parents, uh, you know, etc. It's it's quite different than one man watching thirty kids in some summer program. I don't no think other adults man. around. I don't think it was one. Man I do watching think thirty kids. Yes, was it? Well, it's, it's however many kids, but yes, it's just him. And sometimes when, it's not. Uh, he try and pick one off the pack, though. Yeah, yeah assistant coaches w- wouldn't go. <laughs> wouldn't be part of that. Going on oh, now? You doing the diddling again? He was by himself. But people were saying. They, they they'd walk in. It. He gets he gets lost in the moment and doesn't lock the door. And somebody walks in by accident. There weren't people. Well, people were didn't. Isn't that how we started this? They walked in knew. and caught him. They didn't know he's fucking kids. They didn't see it. I mean, like oh, he's fucking kids again. But people they walked. Would... They walk in by accident and they catch him. Is that what happened yeah. in the end? Yes. Somebody caught him. In they the keep catch. They keep catching him. Yeah. And okay. try to report Because I thought it. it was like people came forward and complained, hey, this dude's a creepy to this to me. Yeah, but they, they would find out by accidentally walking in. They w- it wouldn't be like... So it, it wouldn't be the victim saying they, uh, Even a, a fellow waiter would not would be mad at me if they found out I spit in the customer's food. Nobody's, of course. People aren't comfortable watching you <laughs> fuck these kids. Yeah, but, right. they're, but they're more comfortable not speaking about it than they are calling someone out. They are. It's well, proven to be true. And maybe they also like want Kids to be able out. to believe that it's not true. And he was the founder of the organization. So let's be clear about that, too. He that, started the camp. Look into that. You'd love these. I want to start a camp. So you think the, director, the directors of all camps are suspects? Sure. Okay. Look into them. And Why when you look say into look into, into them, how would you have them looked into? Would you just have... Like Sup- undercover agents show up at the showers As, randomly. Yes, like a Twenty One Jump Street. You pretend you're one of these kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. See what I I'm like saying? That. that sounds like fun. Yeah. I could go to camp. But you just see you shave su- my mustache. You, you show up. You surprise show up, and you go, "Hey, how's it going?" You and the kids. I'm 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 a big, I'm a, very fat twelve year old. Yeah, would I, <laughs> would I like would I would I be offended? Like, oh, I cannot believe that you're looking into me and these kids. Oh, well, looking just, into that's not looking into. Looking into is you know going into somebody's computer, uh, into somebody's home. That's just 
checking on a kid. Check on a kid. Yes. That's, that's checks and balances. I don't know what you thought I was saying. To go through someone's diary, just sneak in, surprise them, and go, hey, surprise. Oh, that's different. Were we all thinking what, what I was saying? No? Checking on is just walking into something? See what they're up okay. to. I don't know. I mean, this is all very vague. This is almost like Trumpian language. Like, look into it. <laughs> Find out what's going on. I'd be the best checker. I mean, I'd be, everybody would be talking about the way I check. Believe yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> You know, how about just the camera in the shower? But see, then the guy... (laughs) (laughs) And then the Mexicans will pay for it. They already said. Uh, Just look into it. Look into it. Ask their friends. Hey, why do they love kids so much? Keith 2016. Sorry, sorry. We're going to have a temporary ban on all summer camps until we find out what the hell is going on. Kendra's laughing at me because I care about kids so much. Okay. What can this I guy tell cares you? About Keith, kids. you got to look into me. I don't yeah. know. Sorry to keep your kids safe. Maybe sarcasm will stop your kid from getting fingers up his rectum. He's looking you straight in the eye I when know. he says that. You know, he was definitely talking about my kids. I almost feel like I've been threatened. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> or maybe it's just what we need. <laughs> Thank you. He, he speaks his mind. Now he more speaks than, his mind, Kim. I think now more than ever. Now more, yeah. yeah. Now more than ever, we, I'm transparent. Keith, yeah. tell us about when America was so wonderful. When we didn't have sarcastic sons of guns. Yeah. Remember when and we brought over the, those, those blankets covered in smallpox? Mm-hmm. Back then, that was awesome. America was so great. Well, we didn't have America then. You got to get it somehow. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. You know. There's only one way. The innovation of blankets. Yeah. <laughs> that was a really like lo- low-tech bio-warfare. That was... It was just smallpox. I th- that's what, what I'm saying. Pox. I think we should go back yeah. to Days of Indians. No, I'm saying look into children being fucked. They're not Indians. Okay, Kamda, you're the best. <laughs> They're not Indians. We get it. They're dead. Uh, Joe Paterno's ghost from hell is writing in. Oh. Keith cares so much about kids. I'm starting to think we need to look into him. Okay. Yeah, that's what kind of what you were saying, right? Well, I'm just a girl. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Don't. I hope you don't look into kids and uh, just think of me when these stories come up. Don't look into these kid lovers. I just love kids. On your free time. That's what you're doing. Do you know what I daydream about? I literally daydream that somebody will need for me to hold their baby while they have to do something on the train. (laughs) Okay. Okay. I just want to hold people's babies. Yeah? Yeah. I daydream about this. I've got a baby you can hold whenever you You want. You got to look into me. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, that's very suspicious. Look at these eyes. That's crazy. (laughs) Kind of like... That's... that's Yeah, there's that tension there that I am suspicious, but can you babysit? You know, it's like... (laughs) It's very hard to get a babysitter in New York. Yeah, it's so hard. But I can babysit, yes. Okay, great. Kenda likes to put herself in these roles to be offended. She wants to hold a baby. Is now the same as Jerry Sandusky, no. who likes to let kids sleep in his house. What I'm saying is, it's not the same. That's right? What I'm it's saying. not the yeah. same. So no one's looking into you. Oh, well, yeah. but I mean, maybe they ought to. People who just want to hold strangers' babies on the train. When, like gotta, anywhere, it's just that the train is where I see a lot of babies. Yeah, but like any I'm lying at the bank, but these I don't. These babies go to the bank. getting these reduced fare metro cards. They're all over the city. <laughs> Yeah, well, good luck with your kids. I don't know. Uh, it I'm really sh- is. And, like, I'm such a, I'm not, a, like, I'm not on top of anything. I don't know how I'm going to be on top of it. It scares me that I, like, right. won't be able to figure out what's going on. Would you let your kids sleep with this, like, hey, I'm sleeping with my assistant coach. We just get along. Don't don't act like he's a creepo, Dad. We Man. just get along. He's an assistant coach. I love the Penn State program, and I'm 12. No. Huh? I have now my, what my son is sleeping over at his camp tomorrow night. They have like an well, overnight. I'm sure he's fine. Oh goodness, what he's fine. They have an right overnight. Now. How many uh, it, overnight at the, the at, at the, the YWHA? Okay, so not a person's house. No. Okay, so that's good. That's a yeah. little different. Yeah. And how many people will be at this? Will be watching over your son? I don't know, but I'm going to look into it. Is it higher than one? Yeah. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. So you're just saying look into the one-on-one stitches. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'd like to hold two babies at once. <laughs> his fucking wife of his. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> twins. <laughs> this wife of his, he's like, oh, Jerry Sandusky, he's downstairs. He sleeps with these boys sometimes. Really? You don't think okay. my wife would go, come upstairs to bed with me. I'm your wife. Uh, not tonight. He has night terrors. Get there, the fuck out. There are two things that I think would help that I don't think was happening back then, and I'm hoping that it's happening more now. 
One is people are telling their kids, nobody is allowed to touch you, not even me. Right. I can't touch you in those parts. Mommy can't touch you. Daddy can't touch you. Nobody. That's not okay. And if you tell me, I'll believe you. And then when they tell you, you fucking believe them and you take action and you say that that person's a piece of shit and you don't act like they need to come over for a piece of pie anymore. And you get that fucking person out of their life. It doesn't have to be the ending of people's life, but it does Mm -hmm. have to be looked at. It's not... It's it's not just it's it's happening without us talking about it, but now we are, so it's different. But if you tell your kid, "I'm going to be on your side, and no one's allowed to touch you," it does change it a little bit. Yeah, it yeah. does matter. Yeah, you have to talk to your kids about that stuff. I got to do that. And maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe a couple other things too. <laughs> but yeah. you know, every once in a while, you got to throw your kid a conversation or two. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. they, they, you got to they... talk to them. Next thing you know, they're going to want something to eat. You know, right, just right. Like Clothing. Big... Oh, oh God. God. They looked at the. I'm not saying hidden cameras because you want to be a cam counselor, but look into you like you're trying to get a green card. But I'm saying hidden cameras. No, I appreciate it, but yeah, you know, <laughs> then it's like they're going to put up their own hidden cameras. You know, yeah. you, you want to. Then talk... they're right. Then you got to watch. Then you got to look into the people putting up the cameras because yeah. maybe they're creeps and they're mm-hmm. looking at the cameras and then they're... Who, then they're, who watches the Watchmen? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. I'm you gotta have a Watchmen saying, Watchmen. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. saying look in your kid's face. You could see when something is happening to your kid. You would hope so, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you can. Not 100, I'm not saying 100%, yeah. but there's some people who could see it and then go, I don't want to talk about it or that's going to make me have to... Look at it. Right. I mean, it's also like you, you can look in your kid's face and, and try and see what's going on. You can t- you can tell something is wrong. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily mean they're being sexually abused. It could be something else. And you don't always know and they won't always tell you. Now Mike's going to stare at his kid's face as like <laughs> curb your enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, what are you doing, weirdo? Hold yeah. still. Hold yeah, still. Yeah, it's, it's easy from this side to just say, look at your kid and they'll tell you. But, you know, there's a relationship with the kid I think that's different now than it was before. It was definitely like... Adults used to be able to, whether their parents, your parents or not, they used to be able to um, punish you. They used to be able to smack you on yeah. the ass. They used to have a say. You used to have to do anything that any adult would say because they are the authority just by right. being the adult. That's not the case anymore. I'm not saying this doesn't happen anymore, but I'm saying like because we're looking at it and we're not just going like that happens to other kids, then hopefully we'll, we'll be able to prevent it or at least, you know, Help yeah, the kid I think there from is there. a lot more awareness around it than there used to be. Yeah, here's yeah. what you do: you act like if you, if you even wonder, hey, is something going on with my kid at this camp? Yeah, when your kid comes home, you just you just throw it out there, like mumbling to yourself. You're like, I know earlier today I had a couple fingers on my rectum, and then the kid be like, I did too, and you go and try to stay calm, mm-hmm. and then you extract the information slowly and use it as a bonding moment at the yeah. same time. But there you go. Yeah. Keith knows how to speak to kids a little too much. Look into that. Guy. No, don't look into me. Just give me your children. <laughs> what the fuck is Tenda talking about? She loves fighting. Does Just she? Favorite. Oh, God. If she was in the MMA, it'd be her dream. Hmm. Yeah. True story. Why'd you guys break up? Because <laughs> she loves fighting. You, you don't see us together? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I mean, you guys see each other. You guys really are exes. You really used to date. Is that no? That's just a joke I tell people. <laughs> oh. I, I really can't tell. I, really... I don't want to say because it says a weird question. Okay, I'm gonna make you wonder. I mean, nobody I... tell him ever on, on, on Twitter. Nowhere. I don't want him know it. I want him, like, what? What are these guys? They're so weird. Hmm. I'm gonna go on Wikipedia and see what information has been added in the last 15 hours. <laughs> Turns out I'm not even real. <laughs> That's, why, That's he... why they called her the girl. Yeah. Right? Uh, no, Kenda's the best. <laughs> so we have a spinoff. That's what my birthday card said every year. You're the best again. And actually, she leaves the cards around. I would just take the same card. Just right on it. It's still the best. I never noticed. <laughs> I'm just such an idiot. <laughs> Happy birthday, you are. And I would do Roman numerals so you can just keep adding to it. Yeah. Yeah. How many years running you've been the best. <laughs> Um, we have, of course, spinoff shows, and one of the spinoff shows is pilot season that we're doing right now under the umbrella Flavor of the Month, where some of your favorite Keith and the Girl guests would come in and for a month present uh, their show to you. And so right now, during pilot season, they come on and pitch their show idea to Henda and myself, and then we let them know our thoughts. The audience goes on our forums and lets uh, them know their thoughts. And up right now is Nick Turner's episode. And what just went up is Marsha Belsky's pilot episode. Here's a little of her. Well, today you were talking to Marsha Belsky, who will also get an entire month for 
doing flavor of the month, which means you get to pick a topic, you get to pick your guests, you will be guest hosting on this network. So we want you to tell us a little bit about your show and then everyone will respond to it. So my idea for this flavor of the month, which I'm so excited to do, will be called Misandry with Marsha. And uh, for those of you who don't know <laughs> what the word misandry is, I will not woman explain it to you. You have to look it up. No, That's it is. the number one requirement. Now, do I have to worry? Misandry, of course, it, it means a contempt for men. Will this? No, it's chauvinism, right? But for a woman against a man, would it? It's like being a reverse racist. Do I have to worry that this will offend? The uh, male audience. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and oh, I'm pu oh, putting in for good. I have one. You know, one but no, good. they shouldn't be offended because obviously it's clearly jokes. You know, like I'm not saying that men should die. I'm just saying that they will die by my cold bare hands. Mm. Right. That's what's really important for this podcast. <laughs> so go to keithandthegirl.com slash VIP and you'll see everything there. We just did a pilot season episode uh, with, with Sydney Washington and, and Marie Faustin. Oh, couldn't stop laughing. Uh, I am less than a minute and a half into the show with Marsha, and I've already had to pause it because I was laughing so hard. Marsha Belsky is a gift to all of womankind. See what I did there? <laughs> and you should all do yourselves the favor and check out the show. All right, so there you have it. Good response so far. I'm good friends with Marsha Belsky's boyfriend, and he is a very... Beaten, shaken, man. twitchy fellow. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think my opinion on this, Mike, is yeah, like yeah. no one's around, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she said that she would she would hire him to be on the show, but put him in the corner the whole time <laughs> with his with his back, like when yeah, you're a if, kid and you have to go in the corner. Right. He'll just stand there with right. a dunce hat, right? If he's good, yeah, right. Or right. if he's bad, yeah. Um, John, that was great. You know John Gosselin, right? He's, fr uh, he's from uh, the uh, 17 and counting shows, right? He has, I think uh, they're up to 21. Huh? John and Kate, John and Kate plus uh, eight. You know, he's one of these. I don't, I don't know. He, right, okay. He's got more kids than you, Mike. Okay. Oh, yeah. is it a reality TV? Yeah. Guy? yeah. Okay. He's not the one that fucked his brothers, no. right? He's, he didn't fuck anybody so far, right? He fucked Kate. He fucked Kate a lot, <laughs> uh, eight he, times. Kate is his wife. Kate is his wife. Yeah. But then well. they broke up. So that's not, uh -oh. yeah. 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 And yeah. she's like, now we have to fight for the kids. And he's like, what? No, you, <laughs> yeah. you win. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. Why is everybody fighting? Take well, wasn't him. he fighting so that he can keep the show also? Uh, I think so. Uh, so anyway, he doesn't uh, have the show right, anymore. Right. Whoever has the kids has the show, right? Yeah, but yeah. also Kate rhymes with eight. John, John. rhymes with... There's no number. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you can keep fucking. You'll never get to that yeah. number that runs with John. Mm. <laughs> uh, he Jonathan. Nope. No, ten. Nah, nope. That's nope. a stretch. Nope. He now works at a TGI Fridays. Uh -huh. Way to manage your money. He's in. Uh, it's in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And uh, he preps and cooks the food there. I don't, that seems like hmm. what a person would be qualified for. He did not have a talent he just had eight children yeah surprise what, but, do, what are you good at uh sperm my sperm always takes right yeah. <laughs> all right you'll work the fryer yeah. <laughs> you will make uh, a very small fraction of your alimony payment right <laughs> right can you pay me under the table <laughs> I, got, I got a problem when uh with those zero dollar checks i've been getting all right, let me mention this. MikeLebovitz.com. Find out all about him. Also, ComediansYouShouldKnow.com. Oh, such a good show. It's oh, yeah. I was yeah, there for the last there. one. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming. Mike hosted. Hilarious. Oh, yeah, I was like, oh, I'm in the dark. I really want him to make fun of me because you were so funny. Oh. <laughs> you can... A lot of people don't want to be made fun of. So no, You never know. Okay. What do you, you, you pick on the audience sometimes, but what I, what I hear is that it's not, uh, it's not too mean. Is this right? Are you talking about me yeah, specifically? Yeah, you specifically. I, I like to pl play with the audience. I don't, I'm not, I don't do crowd work where I like make fun of people in the audience. Right. Unless someone's being a, a, actively being a dick. Sure. But I, I'm more like sort of like to improvise in the moment. I'm not really good at like making fun of the way people are dressed or like, I don't know. It's just not, I don't know. I just, right. it never occurs to me to do that. Well, cause you don't even know the, the next outfit you're going to wear. You're walking <laughs> right, around right, naked right, like right. an animal. Look, right. Look at this. This is i I'm in awe of this person who put a whole <laughs> right. yeah, outfit together. Shirt, shirt on the top, pants on the bottom. I mean, you look great. Yeah. I noticed you are wearing clothes, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, enjoy How your you night. Do it? But, yeah. uh, but yeah, I do like that. Sometimes people will say like, you know, people at the show, they come to a show and they're like, they, no one ever wants to sit in the front row of a comedy show. Right. And, and they always, well, no, they'll make fun 
fun of us. And my first instinct is to say, no, we won't make fun of you. But I always stop myself because that's not true. Right. So what I say is, yeah, but it'll be okay. Okay. You know what right. I mean? Like, yeah, we will make fun of you, but there's worse things going on in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you heard about this Sandusky? <laughs> yeah, sandwich, you know, <laughs> more stories are yeah. still coming out yeah, about yeah. that. Yeah, you might be wearing weird sandals, and someone will bring it up. <laughs> right, uh, you'll be okay. <laughs> I don't want to. I I don't mind being picked on at a comedy show. What I worry about is my face, and if if I'm not like because the the people in the front are illuminated a little more. Yeah, and so a lot of comics seem to be worried about. Is your face making the face that I wanted for every single line in my joke? Yeah, and, you know, a, it's, and then you have to worry about the insecurity of the comedian, right? Kind of, yeah. Because like, yeah. then you feel pressure to enjoy every joke, whether or not you actually yeah. do. I have yeah. a fa- in the front row, I have such a fake smile on, it starts getting painful. They look at me, I give a thumbs up every time. <laughs> <laughs> to hold up a 10, right? Yeah. Right. I'm like, I hope this is being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. sounds so good. What I do is, I, what I, I usually don't make fun of people in the front row or don't pick on them, but if if the front row is left empty, then I'll make fun of people in the second row. Oh, that's fine. It's like, oh, <laughs> you, you're, you. Right, yeah, you, this is that was the stealth front row, you fuckers. <laughs> I pick on people in the back row because you can act like they're wearing anything you want to laugh at. Like you're actually in a big bird costume, like nobody knows, and th- they feel stupid. But nobody's really real. Yeah. So nobody gets really hurt. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't have necks, so they can't turn around and see what you're talking. That's about. right. <laughs> that's right. No, I my show's called Face Front. Yeah. Where yeah. you like you like put people in like a neck mm-hmm. brace, yeah. In, yeah, in one of those dogs of shame, the the dog cones of shame, yeah, yeah. <laughs> face front. Welcome to horse blinders. <laughs> <laughs> Have a seat, face forward. I'll tell you what's happening behind you. It's goddamn ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> this is a dude in a big bird costume. Don't look. <laughs> oh, you can't. That's right. Well, this works out. Yeah. Let me paint you a picture. Yeah. I would never lie to you, people. <laughs> I can't believe two dudes are sixty ing right behind <laughs> you. Anyway, I have five minutes on that. <laughs> Extemporaneous minutes. The next Comedians You Should Know show in New York City is Thursday, July 28th at Gutter Bar in Brooklyn. Yeah. Come out. It's such a great room. It's a, yeah, it's such a great room. The Gutter Bar is actually, it's famous because it's where the guy who had Ebola went. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. It's a bowling alley. It's a bowling alley. It's a bar, and they've got this awesome side room called the Spare Room, which is perfect for comedy. It it's, really is. It's got amazing. like a short little right. like six inch stage. You're right there with him. They've cleaned up all the Ebola. Okay, it's <laughs> fine. But even if you're not sure, he was actually bowling, so he wasn't in the spare room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So kind of just hug the walls on your way to the spare room, <laughs> and you won't have a problem. No, yeah, Zeke yeah. is the big thing now. Yeah, Ebola's yeah, yeah. Old we're school. over Ebola. Yeah. Right. It Yawn. was such a cool room, and also the drinks are not expensive at all. They're not crazy. Yeah, and totally they're, they're normal. Good. They have lots of good uh, craft beer, and yeah, I think like a cocktail is like five or six bucks or something. It's not which is low. Yeah, for mm. for New York, I'm yeah. getting used to it. And it's got these brick walls. The the laughs oh, just the brick snap, walls. snap mm. off. Oh. Yeah. I love oh. it. I was oh. at a place the other day. Don't even get me started. No walls. <laughs> no walls. Yeah. It's this, oh, man. It was the park. The park. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He also has shows in L.A. and Chicago, so that's a lot of traveling back and forth. Uh, but... yeah. I mean, I don't do those ones, but yeah. Well, then who cares? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ComediansYouShouldKnow.com, like I said. You'll see all the information right there. This is the winner of the Montreux Comedy Fest in Switzerland. That's right. Right? Not, not trying to brag. That's why I have Keith do it for me. See? Yeah. I... I, 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 I I won, the, yeah, I, I won, I won that shit. Yeah, it was so we. It, you don't it, even speak Switzerland. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, they, so they're, um, they, I was there. One of the judges who was like a big exec for a uh, big comedy. Uh, in, I I huh? shouldn't say even what. But he was he's he was a, he's a big guy with a big comedy comedy industry job. Okay. That's in Canada, okay. where in French Canada, in Montreal, he's from Montreal, mm. and he, we're walking around Switzerland. And he goes, everyone's fe- speaking French. All the signs are in French. When are people going to? S- when are we going to see people speaking Swiss, which is not a language? <laughs> right. People they speak French there. Do, do you tell them or like, hey, I don't know. So no, I I, I didn't tell him. Right. But <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, 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 that's weird. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so somebody told him eventually, or he figured it out. All right. So um, today's poll, by the way, will be: Should we look into people that love kids so much? Should it be what is looking into people? What is looking into people? Yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> Guess who rates the polls usually? Yeah. Oh, geez. Mm. All right. I don't know. I'm just saying. I don't like kids getting fucked. Yeah. Well, way to take a stand. That's, I don't, uh, it's not my bag. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Some people are into it. I think we should look into them. <laughs> I think we should look into them. We should see inside them with our dicks. 
<laughs> Mike, thank you. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> All right, we'll talk to you guys soon.